For more than 6,000 years, the art of cutting hair has been practiced as a craft. In ancient Egypt, barbers trimmed the square-cut beards of the pharaohs. Today, they care for the square cuts on top of the head. The modern mirrored barber shop of today is quite different from the tonsorial parlor of 50 years ago. But the barber's work remains the same. A never-changing part of his job is reassuring youngsters who, while they may not object violently, are still a bit hesitant about a haircut. Under the striped barber cloth, any customer becomes wrapped in some of the tradition that has surrounded barbers and their shops since the time of Plato, in the days of ancient Greece. The first barbering clubs were formed where men would meet to discuss the topics of the day while having their hair trimmed and beards curled. Today's barber is still an advisor or patient listener to affairs in the lives of his customers. Tyler knows everything. All right, everybody, we're here with Brooke Bellinger, owner of a badass barbershop, Spruce Barbershop in Mid County. So, Mid County has like five towns in one. What town is your barbershop actually in? Mine is located in Port Natchez. Texas. All right, nice. And so, uh, in your experience as a barber, have you ever drained anyone's blood? No, okay. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> no. All right. Um, so, and the reason I ask that is because barbering has a interesting history. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, they used to do. I mean, a barber was a dentist, a surgeon. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone went to them for doctor. You know, anything like that. It, that's not what we do. <laughs> yeah. So you're not Doctor Brooke. <laughs> no, not Doctor Brooke. Right. So what were some of the things they were doing back in those days? Um, I think from what I have read, like they would do root canals. Wow. They would. Um, and this is probably back before anesthesia. Yeah. That's when they used. Drug <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The real stuff. So I was reading a little bit about the history, you know, before you came and they said the reason was it is barbers were kind of like a bridge because doctors didn't want to do they had doctors back then but they didn't want to do that particular type of stuff and so there was a need for it and people of course they didn't have the technology that we do now so people had the like the bubonic plague and yeah. all these diseases and they thought that if they drained your blood that you would make new blood and you would be healthy and whatever was going on, you know, say you had the flu. Cause back then people died of the flu. Yeah. They thought it was bad blood. So they wanted to get the blood out of you. So they were draining people's blood. And then I think that's where the barber pole came from. Yeah. The, the barber pole is like a sign of like, I guess, medical, um, you know, what you were saying. Yeah. Like the red and the white. Cause they had all these bloody rags. They were constantly making a mess and they needed a way to advertise their business. And so it was kind of like they would hang the, the rags and then the city started outlawing that. So they made the poll. And then I, I heard that when the poll came to America, then it was more red, white, and blue. They added the, so they would put a bloody rag out. Yeah. Because they were, nice. yeah. And this is like in <laughs> old school France. Yeah. And they switched it to a red and white pole. Yeah. There, they, they still said like, there's some red and white poles mm -hmm. on like eBay yeah. that are like real old. Right. That are right. like super expensive. Yours is They're red. Not. And you have, mine's, you have mine's red, white, and blue. Yeah. And I heard that when it came to America, they added the blue because it was our they nation's should. colors. Yeah, yeah, for sure. America's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the history of barbering, which has been going on for thousands of years. Which you is know, great that you know more about that than I do. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, you know, pe humans have always had hair. Yeah. And you've always had a need to cut hair. And, and it started, like, the stylish part of it started kind of with the ancient Egyptians because they had the weird beards, yeah. you know, with the braided beards. They yeah. had squared off beards, uh, probably like the edging, yeah. you know, the pharaohs. And then the ancient Greeks had a lot of beards too. Yeah. Those, the philosophers. 
And you've probably heard of the Caesar cut, right? Do yeah, you, do you know totally. Who, do you yeah. know who the Caesar cut is named after? Julius Caesar. Yeah, Julius yeah. Caesar because he wore his hair, you know, just come, come to the front. Absolutely terrible um, hair Which was popular in the, in the <laughs> 90s when I was in high school. I, yes. had, I had the Caesar. It was, everybody nice. did. And, and in the 90s, you would get the Caesar and dye the top of it blonde. Yes. Or, or pull it through a cap and get the frosted tips. Nice. And then the rest of it would be your natural hey, brown the, color. Hey, the, the frosted tips are coming back. That's, I'm telling you that. That's good news. Um, I guess. I it's, can rock some it's a little. Tips. It's a little different. Um, mm -hmm. You just kind of feather it on now. Okay. But, yeah, the highlights for the dudes are coming back. Everything from the 90s is coming back. It there's, is. There's kids on the first day of school that are wearing Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah, I'm and, saying. I mean, I got the split. I'm rocking the, the, the split part, you know? Oh, I don't, I don't like that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, not so much. Um, I, I like the. don't think that's coming back in men's hair, though. I like that the business comb over like what basically, yeah. basically what i have yeah. with the hard part i like yeah. that that is the cool thing to do because yeah. it, it's super easy so and that's more of like a 50s 60, 50s era yeah you know it's like classic business yeah definitely. and since i'm in sales that's what i like to, yeah. to do because it was hard for a while because in the 90s early 2000s i kind of had that messy look mm -hmm. where you get the the bed head yeah. that's when it came, and you would just oh you would, God, you would mess bedhead. your hair up well, or that's they got to be glued. Yeah, and that's okay in college, but you can't really do that in the business community. No. And then I went from that to kind of like pushing it up in the middle, <laughs> almost like the faux hawk, oh. which, and that's not that great for business either. So I was super excited when like, hey, a comb over is the cool thing yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. I've been like, you know, the hard parts have been, um, they've been changing it up now. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, they're getting lines and, they're getting racing stripes yeah, down that's the side cool. of their head, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the younger generation is definitely a lot, lot wilder with mm -hmm. their hair now. Um, I get a lot of, you know, just like classic, like you said, business cuts, you know, the comb over type deal. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of like over the the whole like real hard thick parts. Oh, you know? okay. I mean, yeah. I like. I, obviously, I do your hair, so yeah, I yeah. like the way I do your hair. But uh, you know, so you're wanting to soften up the part a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, more blended. Yeah, and that, that's kind of why I started going to a barber. You know, for years I would go to just anywhere, maybe like a salon that had drop-ins, and I noticed that, I, and I started getting a fade. You know, and I wanted yeah. it faded from like a zero or basically nothing yeah. all all the way up to to here. And that takes a lot of work and precision. And when I would go to a salon, they would do it in like five minutes. And I'd be like, I don't think they're taking enough precision no. time here. And the thing, like we're retracting back what I was talking about. Um, when they, so when I blend your hair, I go all the way down to bald at the bottom. But I blend it up to scissors on top to where mm -hmm. like right here, you've got, you've got hair. Yeah. I'm talking about when they cut all of that off, right. you know, like. It's just, like a super high fade, yeah. Well, it's just like buzzed, and then there's right. a line. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, because it, it may be an hour, and I, I don't really get a whole lot off the top. Yeah. But just from here to here, that fade will yeah. take like 45 minutes. And yeah. That, that's great because anything you do, is, is it going to – that's that's fine precision no matter what it is, whether it's cutting hair or – building legos if you spend 45 minutes versus 10 minutes it's probably going to look better no totally when, when you spend more time i'll spend i mean there are times i will spend an hour and 45 minutes on someone's hair everybody's yeah. hair grows differently sure your hair is pretty normal mm -hmm. <laughs> um but it's super straight it doesn't yeah, it doesn't super do anything straight, yeah. but like you know you get somebody whose hair grows every which way you've got to turn those clippers and oh, dig into yeah. it and get each individual hair um there's some people who are really fast at it i don't know how they do it mm -hmm. that's not my i don't know i right. just sit there and take my time um that's that's a really big deal with me and you know with spruce i am um really big about you know i'd rather you spend an hour mm -hmm. and make a perfect haircut right rather than take 10, 15 minutes and get them in and out. Sure. Um, you know, it's quality over quantity. Yeah. And I think people should go into it knowing like, hey, you know, she may be spending a lot of time on the person before me. Um, it's okay if I have to wait a little bit because I'm going to get a quality haircut. But yeah, because you're going to do the same thing. You have a little bit of a niche for 
the wait time. Yes. That's something special. So, so that's a it. huge complaint we have. <laughs> um, you know, we have guys that come in and you can get a service that takes two hours. You can, I mean, it's, it really depends on who you're sitting with. Mm -hmm. Me in particular, if you have a beard that's down to here and you want it to be completely trimmed and groomed, I call it the extended beard, spruce beard trim. Right. Um, that, I mean, I can go anywhere from 45 minutes to two hours just on your beard. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that's more than the yeah. hair on your head. Yeah. I mean, I, I freehand a lot of stuff that I do, um, like, you know, just like with your haircut, I blended half of it with a straight razor. It, it just depends on your method and technique of how you're doing things. Um, I am very tedious and just want everything to be there. I don't want you to leave with one hair on your head. Yeah. I'm not a big believer in business cards. And, uh, but while you're waiting though, you can have a drink. Yeah. You, you can, can have a drink and, you can and have if a coffee, it's, if you it's can a have... long enough way, you can have two drinks. Yeah. I mean, we're I mean, gonna, and you've got everything. You've got coffee, you've got soft drinks, you've got whiskey, you've got, uh, I mean, crap, yeah. beer. Yeah. Longhorn liquor has been awesome to us. Yeah. Um, they give us their barrel select of the month or sometimes every week <laughs> because um, it's really like a man cave yeah you've got yeah the, that the, was the whole idea the antlers on the wall you've got cool you know, uh toolboxes for yeah. for putting the uh tools away the whole idea was you know to really to make a place that wasn't corporate that wasn't rushed mm -hmm. that guys could come in and actually get pampered just like a woman goes into a salon and gets pampered yeah you because know? women go to get their nails done and they get chardonnay they get wine yeah. they like, get all i mean i walk into my nail salon i i'm spending a hundred to two hundred dollars mm -hmm. i probably have three four glasses of wine i'm in there for two three hours yeah um, I don't get to get my hair done often because they work the same hours I do. Sure. Um, but when I used to, you know, you're, you're still, you're dropping, you know, a hundred so dollars on maybe just a haircut or a little right. color, whatever. And you're in there for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, most of, all of those places are by appointment. Now, some of the nail places are, you know, um, they, they take walk-ins and stuff, but most of the salons are by appointment and with men, you guys are hard to yeah. uh, round up on appointments. Sure. And so the walk-in demand is just super high. And, you know, as barbers, you know, they, they li we live a different lifestyle. You mm -hmm. know, everyone's got their contractors, they've got kids, they've got this, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. you know, I started and I was like, I'm, you know, everybody do appointments, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And then everyone was booked up. So like everyone who walked in, I was like, well, I, you know we're booked up mm -hmm. and so then I was like no we're not gonna do appointments we're gonna do walk-ins then you know I've had my clientele since uh, you know, I've been I've been in the industry for 10 years um, right because in addition to being an owner you're also yeah a, I'm a also barber. there yeah. <laughs> and that's being the owner and being there and managing and doing the social media and everything, I have to be by appointment. Yeah, because just imagine, you know, for the guys out there, like if you own a landscaping company, but you're also the guy that cuts every single lawn. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's just hard to coordinate everything. Mm -hmm. And then somebody doesn't know what this is in the computer or... And the whole time you're cutting hair from... Someone's from... bitching about waiting, so yeah. I've got to stop, you know. And so when people make appointments with me, like I am, most of my people have been with me for since the beginning, so mm -hmm. they know. Right. You know, they're like, oh, you know. And if you're cutting hair at 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. or later, then you can't do any business during that time. Your business, no, your, your yeah. accounting and your uh, social media marketing, which is See, and I try, phenomenal. like, you know, I've, I try to keep up with the social media during the day as well. Um, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Because, you know. Well, just, just like fitness, the before and after pictures are great. Yeah. Because you get a lot of guys that come in there that, that maybe waited a little too long, waited an extra week or two, and they come in with a hat. And, yeah. And they look a mess. Yeah. And then yeah. they get, you know, you get edged up on the beard, which beards came back too. Um, I don't, there wasn't a whole lot of beards in the 90s. It was more a little bit of goatees maybe. And a lot of businesses, I think, 
had kind of like a dress code against beards. Yeah. And they no, really like lacks a, that. A lot of schools, businesses, mm -hmm. um, you know, we yeah. still have got the, the refineries. They won't, you know, if you have and to take the And that's because of like the respirators, yeah. I guess. But, but yeah, teachers used to not be able to have beards. And now, you know, you've got investment bankers with beards yeah. and, and the cool mustaches. Beards that, are that, a cool thing. Yeah. Like I am... I because I didn't have one until like 2015. If I, mean, I, I didn't, people probably say I still don't have one because it's just like barely there. But whatever, it's whatever. I mean, it's you know, whatever. It's, it's I'm little, not a, I'm not a hairy guy. It's so. a little patchy, but yeah, you know, yeah. We get it. We get it looking right. <laughs> um, no beards are like you know, when I was in Austin, they were everywhere. Yeah, you know? and little, I, a little I moved, more hipster. Yeah, and I moved there 2011, and. You know, everyone had a beard. There were beard competitions on Sixth Street. You mm -hmm. know, like it was really cool. And then when I moved back home, I was like, "Wow! Like, there's there are a lot of people here with beards, yeah. and there are not a lot of people who know how to cut beards. Right, um, right. They take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like if you were to go trim a hedge, you know, and articulate, but instead a hedge grows, you know." in one way mm -hmm. beards are just like hair they all have different growth patterns this or that so you got to kind of accommodate and make these illusions out of whatever's on their face you know right, right. um but you know we i i have a i would say probably you know 80 percent of our clientele has beards yeah um we have a a huge beard gang <laughs> and it, it's really cool what you do with it's almost like a gel and then the straight edge yeah yeah and it's nothing that i could ever do at home no. I mean, i'm terrible at edging so i had a guy come in um the other day awesome guy he just moved here from um italy he was in the navy or no he was in the army mm -hmm. and uh he tried to take a straight razor to his own beard like by himself in the back uh, of his neck and i was oh, like man. bro I, I can't imagine doing that in the mirror you know because yeah. it's opposite the mirror and so right. and he had just cuts all over the back of his neck and i was like what did you do and he's like, oh, i tried straight razor in the back of my neck and i was like what yeah that's crazy and yeah and that's something that guys may not like to talk about but you guys offer like back and chest like yeah waxing because... yeah we offer waxing um mm -hmm. you know it, i mean our services go from getting your nails cleaned underneath them mm -hmm. to getting your chest back waxed to get in a shave to getting a facial a haircut I mean, you can come in for just a haircut you can come in for a beard trim you know it it goes anything that you can pretty much think of for men's pampering mm -hmm. minus pedicures yeah I, yeah, you don't I, want to go there. I I personally don't, but I want to throw that in there at some yeah, point. It might be cool. But like I'm not I'm not gonna So do that. have you ever had a a um a groomsman group? Yes. So we've been getting a lot of groomsmen groups. Um so that's actually what initially triggered me opening Spruce. Yeah. So you're exceptionally young to be a business yes. owner and a, and a female business owner at that. And what the interesting dynamic is that it's pretty much all female ran. You know, there's all female barbers. Yeah. Um, how old are you right now? So, so I'm 26. Yeah. So to own a business and own a successful business that's been around for, how, has it? We opened in 2017. Yeah. yeah. So two years now. Yeah, yeah two yeah. years now. I because I moved back from Austin in 2016. Okay. And so I was working at this really cool place. Um, it's called Stellar, and it's on Port Natchez Avenue, and it's a small Port Natchez Avenue in Port Natchez in in Austin. No, or, in Port Natchez. Oh, okay. So yeah, what, so, what, so what were you doing in Austin? So where? when I was in Austin, I had like four or five different jobs. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Austin is cold-blooded probably to afford the austin rent <laughs> yes austin <laughs> rent is insane you get a box for about you know 2500 bucks yeah it's probably like the size the, of this room it's like the san francisco of texas and i was young when i was there and you know i wanted to live in these fancy places and, oh everybody you know, that's young wants to live I, in austin yeah, yeah i wanted to go to bo have bottle service and go to eddie v's you yeah. know it's all into the material things and um you know i I remember I would make these fake resumes. <laughs> <laughs> that was when Craigslist was a thing. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would do anything from dealing blackjack to bartending. Yeah, you've um, got some bartending hair. experience. Yeah. yeah. I was, you know, probably not good at it for the bar part, but I, I made a lot of money doing it. It's just, mm -hmm. um, it 
Austin is it's expensive. It's mm-hmm. wild. There's it's you know we would our bar that bar didn't close till six a.m. Um, they would have oh, wow. after hours. Oh okay. Yeah, a lot a lot of rules broken. I yeah, mean, because you know, in Texas. Aren't they all supposed They're to close? They're supposed to close at two. Yeah. And then you have after hours, and you, but you don't serve alcohol. Oh, okay. And so you don't serve alcohol after 2 a.m. Yeah. So that's when you really make your money. Right, because <laughs> after 2 a.m., you got to go to Louisiana. I mean. mm, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're far from Louisiana and Austin. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's a lot of water bottles passed around, this, that, uh, the other. Um, mm. You know, uh, it. you know, we during acl or south by southwest yeah. south by southwest was a wild time to be in austin oh i'm sure uh, you know i i remember we had twista in there so yeah, he was yeah. like super famous in the 90s are, are you uh, too young to remember little troy no okay. i oh no <laughs> i jam little troy all the time i was um, i was jamming it today and it made me think of that so uh, still a bitch in my book that, that's what i was playing <laughs> <laughs> that is because, right. every time I get mad so, at my boyfriend, I jam well, that, and he's like, "I I hate you." So there, you know, you forget about it. Like yeah. you, you go like years of your life where you forget about little Troy, and then you just kind of remember it, and you're like, "Hey, I think I want to jam that." Met her so at a bar yeah, yeah. Outside. So I listened to that one, and then I scrolled a few times, and I saw the chopped and screwed version. Oh my which, gosh! Which like eight minutes. That was like long. a thing. Yeah. And I I cannot believe that was ever a thing. Yeah. I don't know what anyone, what everybody was taking to enjoy something so, chopped and screwed. Well, but. I, I was a little, I, you know, I'm a little older than you. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm about 10 years older than you. So in, in the 90s, I mean, the, the chopped and screwed was like, it, it was That's it. so weird. Yeah, yeah. Like Houston, um, all through the South. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. But. Man, I made a post the other day, actually. Um, I, 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 so I have a playlist for Spruce Barbershop that goes, it, I mean, it's got 900. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's awesome. It. By the way, there's always awesome music. What streaming service is it on? So I use Spotify. Okay. Um, and it, and it, yeah, I've seen you like cast from your phone and it goes yeah, on, the, on the TV. Yeah. It'll, and, and my phone connects to the iPad and then it connects to the TV and all right, that right. stuff. Um, but you know, it gets old just listening to like classic rock or Texas country. Yeah. So this playlist I have accumulated since yeah. 2013, probably. It's pretty um, cool, and, and and I've been there on a Friday, by the way, when you're off. And, yeah. And it and they keep it going. Yeah. It's, it's good. Good. Yeah. So you know it'll go from Led Zeppelin to Tupac mm-hmm. to. It's always Hayes yeah. Carl. It's funny know. when the rap is going. You know? I love the rap. Yeah. I like. I mean, I like. Because you know, because it's a, while, it's it's a man cave. Yeah. yeah it you is. know, after a while, like. So if I'm doing like a shave service, I, I want to listen to blues. I've oh, got okay. like I've got like a groove that I do. So you've got certain music for certain services. Yeah. So yeah. like one of my old old clients, uh, we used to call it a Tupac fade. Yeah. And every time I would listen to Tupac, mm-hmm. I would sit there and fade his hair, just like amazing. Yeah. Um, do you think he's still alive somewhere? Probably. You think so? I, that may be a smart idea. You yeah. know, I, I don't know. I got real into the Tupac and Biggie story when it got released on A&E. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty wild. Um, yeah. I hope he's somewhere. That'd be cool. It'd be cool know. if he came out, yeah. you know? It's just like, hey. What if he just released a brand new album? That would be... Dude, yeah. he has been releasing music for the last <laughs> 10 years. He, he's, he's been like, dead for like he's, he's the most He's the most dead person that has the most <laughs> new music. Yes. Right? I'm yeah. always finding new Tupac songs. Yeah. The, um, when, when the Machiavelli CD came out, that was I was like, that that was when all the conspiracy theorists came out about Tupac. So, yeah. yeah. So you know, there's a, there's a wall mural of Tupac in San Francisco in Chinatown that I got to take a picture by. It's one of my most favorite pictures ever. I've never been to it's, San Francisco. Um, I, I only went there for the day. I was I was in Napa Valley and Ubered to San Francisco just for the day. I feel like Napa Valley would be my jam. I like wine. Yeah. Th- <laughs> so do the train. You ride on a train that goes past all the wineries and all the vineyards, nice. and you obviously drink wine on the train. I've what, never been on a train. And what was funny is we passed the there's a vineyard for Sutter Home, which is like the gas station wine, like the uh, That's disgusting. Look, the, the, the screw get top like bottle. Four yeah. headaches. Yeah, no yeah. no cork. It's a you know a twist yeah. off like crack 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 crack. They have a vineyard in Napa Valley. So wow. the same grapes that are at all the expensive wineries are right next door to Sutter Homes. I mean, I'm yeah. sure I'm I'm sure Sutter Homes. Yeah. 
makes. Now, you think Austin is expensive. California is the most expensive place I've ever been in my life. California is ridiculous. I've, I've been to London. I've been to Vegas. I've been to, you know, different countries. California <laughs> beats them all. I mean, on... they've got great weather. Yeah. But, um... And I used to... Th so, have you ever been to California at all? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, Okay, yeah. okay. So, I used to think that people were exaggerating about the weather because we have pretty nice... What You know, like... No, that we weather is... Yeah, yeah. So, we have Christmas in shorts. And I was like, yeah, yeah, California, whatever. No. I went to San Diego and that was the best weather I've ever had in my life. So, yeah. I, I've been to San Diego a few there's, times. There's no humidity. No. So, it's like 80... It's awesome. It's like 80 degrees. Our not, face you're not, looks you're, awesome. You're, you're my not, hair stays Yeah, cool. you're not sweating at all. The water is... Super freezing, cold. freezing, super cold. Yeah. Like you don't it's not e really worth getting. Yeah, like you don't I'm even. Good. Yeah, the Pacific is different than the Gulf. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. different. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have a good friend who lives in San Diego, and um, yeah. you know, we've, I've gone there a couple of times. It's awesome. I look mm -hmm. great when I, I, I look amazing in dry weather. Do you think it's because humidity does something to women's hair? No, I think because humidity makes me greasy. Oh, okay. It's just, you know, it's humid. It, yeah. It always makes me look sweaty and that's true. probably hair, too. I don't know. You know, as much as I'm involved in hair, <laughs> I don't really take much effort into mine. Right, right. I'm not very good at the I, whole woman game. That probably just comes along with being a business owner, though. I get I know. I, I've just, like, I have not... I have never been one of those girls. I just learned how to, like, contour my face. Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, flip, flip it up a little bit. And so if you're watching on YouTube, you probably wouldn't imagine that Brooke s slays the large game animals, no, right? No, <laughs> not at all. So let's dive into that a little bit. Um, so, you know, I, I met uh, my boyfriend, Colby. His name's mm -hmm. Colby Dimbo. He's a hunting and fishing guide. He owns Sabine Lake Lodge um, yeah. here in, you know, I guess, Mid-County, Beaumont area. Right. Um. I have always been like super into fishing and whatnot, mm -hmm. and I, my family growing up, like I, I, I was too young to go hunting or like it just during that time, girls didn't hunt. That was a dude thing, you right. know. And um, I remember, you know, when I was in Austin, I used to go fish in these ponds. They have these stock ponds around Academy in Austin. I go fish there by myself. Yeah. And did you ever go to the Bat Bridge? <laughs> Yeah, I'll go to that bridge, but <laughs> uh, I I didn't fish over there. Was, I would fish more in like San Marcos area. Okay. Um, but you know, as so I moved back home, and there's not much to do here, at yeah. all. You have I to mean, you have to create things to do here. You have to get adapted. So I'm, to I'm here. a big pro you know from networking. Like, yeah. I'm a big proponent of like let's make Beaumont cool. Yeah. And I, I try to pump you up and like hey this is going on you should go to this you know for business networking. But, but yeah, you're right. Um, you're not going to run into things to do. No, there, you have there's to... literally not, there, there are no trails to hike. Right. You have, to, mean, you have to seek it out. Yes. You, know? you, you got to make your own fun around here. You do. So yeah. I started going to Pleasure Island a lot. Mm -hmm. And because when I was growing up, was where my dad would take me fishing. You know, right. we'd go fish off the rocks and stuff. And I was fucking terrible at it. <laughs> I would go there. I mean, I would go to Academy buy all this crap you know yeah. that i've youtubed and blah 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 and i'd go out there and go through like 30 jig heads just because mm -hmm. i didn't know how to like get it off the rocks and stuff and then and then i met colby on bumble and bumble, okay. yeah i met him on bumble that's like way out so i i know a little bit of tinder and then i never did bumble so uh, yeah. tinder wasn't really my jam it was weird yeah. bumble the what's, girl. What's, what's different about bumble bumble is the one so, where the girl has yes. to message the guy tinder like everybody can message yeah, and that, yeah. that was like to me more of like a hookup thing uh, rather than like trying okay. to like find a partner you yeah know? yeah <laughs> um bumble was really cool i actually did some promotional work with them in austin and that's how i found out about it you know when i got here I was like yeah I don't really know anybody anymore you know I moved mm -hmm. away for six years and yeah so um that's cool though that Bumble you, has a success message, story yeah you yeah. message the guy first and uh -huh. you know we kind of <laughs> hit it off we I had no idea I was gonna date him yeah um we just started as friends you know like I thought he was a complete shithead <laughs> I I was like no I'm not gonna date him but he's hilarious like I'm gonna hang out with him he's awesome yeah um but I would text him all the time be like hey like where should I go fish blah 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 yeah and that kind of started and then you know eventually we actually 
and you he know, and he's like super into hunting, no, he's hunting like, and fishing. Yeah. He like that's, that's the his, way I am about Spruce Barbershop. Yeah, is the way he is about fishing and hunting, and, and that's his career. Yes, is hunting, I mean hunting. he lives to do it. And so he, he's a he's a guide. He he's a like what else? So so yeah. he you know we have a he, or he has a lodge. <laughs> yeah, I like to say we a lot. Um, so he has a lodge and it, that it's, it's the nicest lodge in the area. Um, right, right. it's, you know, it's on Airbnb, it's on VRBO. It accommodates, I think 12 people, something mm-hmm. like that. It's waterfront. Um, so we get a lot of corporate groups, this, that, the other, and they'll do what's called like a cast and blast. Okay. So they'll go like hunt duck hunting in the morning and then they'll like go fishing in the evening mm-hmm. and or vice versa um he doesn't do like a lot of deer hunting or anything around here that's more of a hobby um mm-hmm. but the duck teal dove and fishing that's yeah. that's more of a southeast texas thing yeah um you know and so once i started getting into it with him i was like so much fun you know and it's actually taken i just now started getting really good at fishing so are you, are you a pretty good marksman okay so like i rifles aren't my jam really like, i don't like rifles because you like handguns or no what? i like crossbows Crossbow. so when yeah. i when i first when i killed my first deer mm-hmm. it was with uh, a raven crossbow and so the crosshairs on that you don't you're not lining up the crosshairs you're lining up the footage or you know like it's like Mm -hmm. at 100 300 500 and that's what you're lining up as far as how far the deer is okay Mm -hmm. so i have nothing i have no idea about rifles Mm -hmm. and we go to this other ranch one time and like i had this perfect opportunity to shoot this huge axis and i didn't understand that I wasn't supposed to be aiming with the dots. I'm supposed to be aiming with the crosshairs. So I, I mean, I missed this huge, huge buck uh, like yeah. eight times. Mm-hmm. I mean, I literally shot at it quite. He just stood there, and I was just like, man, I don't get it. And then finally, Colby was like, "Are you using the crosshairs?" And I was like, "No, I was using the dots." He was like, "Oh my god, now you're supposed to use the crosshairs." So right. you know, I finally figured it out, but um. I, it's really easy. I mean, a crossbow's like a rifle. It's. I just yeah. feel like it's got a little bit more of a and it, touch to well, it. You yeah, know? and it's really cool too. Yeah, um, it got really popular with the Walking Dead. Yeah, and they when they make them now, like they they just release a new one. It's only six pounds. It goes mm-hmm. to here to here. So like you don't need a tripod. You can just you oh, okay. know. And I, I'm a little girl. You yeah. know, I I can't. I, rifle they're heavy to me Mm -hmm. um so i mean i just i prefer to use the crossbow he doesn't shoot with a rifle at all he uses a compound bow for pretty much everything oh okay um it's just less loud i don't know it's just a lot cooler yeah when you recently got to go to africa on a hunt right yes so we went to africa um africa is not what i expected it to be yeah so tell us like the differences between Africa and the U.S. Okay. All right. So, Africa, let's just, you know, let's imagine the Golden Triangle, mm-hmm. right? And 99% of the population is on government assistance and doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest works. That's Africa. There are no city jobs. They do not take out the trash. They do, I mean... There's trash all over the roads. There's riots. There's people burning stuff. It's super, super corrupt. Um, Every, every woman's got a baby on their hip or pregnant, you know. I mean, I, I literally could, if. What part of Africa? So we were in South Africa. Um, We were closer to East London and um, we stayed in an area called Sturkstrom. Um, which was close to Queenstown, 30 minutes away, probably from Queenstown. And I got to see a lot of Queenstown. And that was very odd. You know, everyone's selling oranges on the street. And then you've got, like, huge total signs everywhere. Oh. Um, do they have a city? Like, do they have skyscrapers? So, yes. so yeah. I mean, it is. It is westernized. It's mm-hmm. it's like this area. Yeah, because South Africa is like a little more. Is it British or somebody owns it? Like, I have it's, no it's, idea who real... owns it, but 
they need to get it together <laughs> whoever owns it i mean every building you've got busted windows it's, ah, okay. it's like downtown port arthur but populated <laughs> i mean legitimately it, it's just terrible yeah. it was you know there's just tra like i was so annoyed with mm -hmm. the amount of i took so many pictures on my camera of the amount of trash i remember seeing the picture of i the, actually talked to you yeah the trash on the road and right the trash on the road and i mean it is, because they were on a strike is yeah. that right the so, city i mean like so they stopped paying the city workers yeah. and um so obviously no one's gonna go pick up trash for free right and but you'll see people just walking around just they just throw trash on the ground uh, they don't throw it in the trash yeah. can they just throw it on the ground right you know people just uh, liquor stores are full the banks the banks there are, operate completely differently everyone mm. gets paid once a month so oh, wow. we just got super lucky to land there on the 31st when yeah. all government funding was being handed out so oh, goodness. every bank was you know just for me to exchange a hundred dollars u.s dollars into rand it took a three hours and 45 minutes wow um it's the lines are extremely long you have to go to like a specific teller it it was wild but you know, once we got on the ranch, past the towns and stuff, it was super nice. You know, it was winter there when we got there. So mm -hmm. it was in like the 50s. It was cold. Oh, okay. Um, but there are huge animals, but it's not like, yeah, you know, cause you, you're... you watch The Lion King, you're like, right. yeah, there's going to be lions and monkeys and all this stuff running around. And th there are, but it's it's not like that. There's, there's a city right next to you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and people poach on the farms there there's there it's a lot of just craziness going on over there um so what type of game were y'all after oh god everything yeah <laughs> um, and, and that's what a lot of people don't realize is that the the money that you guys spend goes to conservation and the, yeah. the community and things like that so that it goes to actual people that work there mm -hmm. you know um and so when you go hunt there it's not it's not like here where you go sit in a blind mm -hmm. you go ride around on like a truck mm -hmm. through 99,000 acres of land right and yeah. africa's big yeah well like, like in these ranches bigger. are huge yeah africa's way bigger than the united states and uh, most of them are not allowed to have high fences mm. so it, that's like a big restriction there um so you're going through these areas and they've got you know their staff who like lives on the farm they, they call them trackers mm -hmm. and they they sit on the back and they kind of spot everything and you're sitting in the front looking at everything and um it, it's wild i hated it um right. that was not my kind of hunting what's the climate like over there that is awesome so it was winter time yeah it was awesome so you're in the you're you Super were dry yeah like, so here in usa we're above the equator yeah. now you're going below the equator and, and yeah, i think that we, when we, we were, were in summertime that's when we were going through like 110 like yeah. wild wild heat you were and, you were in winter time yes. because the earth axis is tilted. and had i listened to colby i would have brought shorts and shirt you know yeah. like and luckily i did some research found out it was really cold there and brought so where did y'all stay like at night so like we stayed at a ranch it was okay. called tavatalo safaris um, it was beautiful. It was an awesome ranch. And they know. had like a good power grid and everything? Yeah. So okay. they have, which was wild because like I expected it to be like not, you know, I expected there not to be pa power or Wi Fi or this or that. <laughs> yeah. And they've got like power lines while I'm trying to take a sunset pick. And I was like, man, oh, you know. Okay. But yeah, they, they have to install their own power lines, but they have a lot of the um, wind. What are they? What yeah, are those? Like, windmills? Uh, turbines. Yeah. Turbines. There yeah, you go. They have a lot of those all yeah. around there. Um, That's so interesting. It was, yeah, it was super, it was really weird. But yeah. I mean, it just like, I, I had never flown more than four hours. So, oh, you know, flying 26 hours to go somewhere where I thought like, oh, geez. You know, a lion was going to be holding another lion what, off a cliff. Was, was there layovers the or was that straight to Africa? Uh, there were layovers, but they were quick. Okay. We were running run into the next flight yeah, you know yeah. you go from houston to the, dubai to east london yeah to south africa L london is the furthest flight that's about 12 hours for me yeah. um def definitely wild. want to go to dubai did you have a layover in dubai i had like a four hour layover there but it was like not enough time to do anything morning. yeah and they yeah. really do not like women there <laughs> well because you're not covered up right yeah, not yeah. covered up i'm not gonna cover up <laughs> um you know and so it was really hard to just get anybody to even like service us um mm. it, it was very odd 
in Dubai. It was really? Really odd. I want to go there one day, though, because yeah. it's like the city of the future. Yeah, I mean, it's it's got a lot of restrictions. As a man, you, you're going to be a lot easier to go. Um, right. sure. As a woman, it's it's completely different. They, I mean, they literally look at you like, <laughs> why don't you have a towel on your face you know i don't oh, know wow. yeah. um it, it it was weird and then on our so on our flight there it was okay you know it, it was early in the morning we ate which we thought i don't know i thought it was like 8 p.m you know but who i don't even know yeah, you're like was. 12 hour yeah, difference I, I, I was messed up from that but <laughs> um you know yeah the, when i flew to london the very next day i slept for hours oh yeah it, no it was... i mean i popped to add bill because pm I, and... well i can't sleep on the plane i watched movies the oh, whole time man, and, it, and, it, out. and it was nighttime so when i landed in london then i had to catch up on sleep yeah so. uh so you know when our, our flight there wasn't bad on the flight back so it says you know we're we're departing at 2 p.m. We land at like 1:45, mm -hmm. so we've got to like haul ass to to the uh, you know what's it called the gate, mm -hmm. and we actually get there and the customs is at the gate. So when oh, you yeah. get to the gate, going back to the U.S. So coming coming from the U.S. to somewhere was fine. Right. Um, coming back to the U.S. Mm. I mean, they took apart my camera lens, my uh, camera, computer, this, that, the other, and you're, it's almost like a holding cell. Yeah. At the gate, getting. So did y'all did y'all bring back any game? So yeah, so Colby, you know, he ended up killing I think like ten animals. Um, ten. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. He, he got like a gems buck, a water buck, a lechway. Kudu, um, I don't even know warthog, what that... caracal, <laughs> you got all kinds of crap. I mean, I, I. So how do you bring that back? I, so they, I think they like dip it and like, you know, they obviously the, gut it and everything. They cut the head off. You're not the, getting like the body or anything. Oh, okay. um, they you're ship not getting it to any you? the meat. Yeah, right. they ship it to you. And so basically, how, they just ship it to the taxidermist. How much meat do you have in your freezer? So we have two commercial freezers full of meat. <laughs> But um, none of it's from Africa. So okay. the thing that that place does is you, the you get to eat what the group before you kills. Mm. Because I don't, I, I don't, I guess you could probably ship your meat, but I'm sure that's pretty hard and extreme. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Because it's gotta say. So do y'all have mounts of anything that y'all kill? So them? not I yet, think? not okay. yet. Um, they all get, they all got sent to the taxidermist. So okay. they'll, I'm sure, I don't know, you know, the first axis I killed took I don't four months to yeah. get done so you know that's a lot of animal yeah. these are all like 55 plus animals mm -hmm. um so it, should, it probably would take a little while do they let you uh hunt giraffes over there yeah they do really? yeah, yeah they do that's it's really fucked can up. you can you eat a giraffe or no I'm, I'm sure you can I wouldn't want to <laughs> the <laughs> giraffes were like the most peaceful creatures so well, in Toys R Us, fact, you know, that this is... Yeah, giraffes can kill an, a lion in one stomp. How do they kill a lion? How With does their it... leg. Like, oh, okay. they have such leg power. Yeah. So, giraffes can haul ass. They right, they right. run really fast. Um, But they're just chilling. You know, they're mm -hmm. chilling, just eating, hanging out. You kind of ride up to them, and they'll kind of look at you a little bit, and they'll run off, you know. Um, But they're really, really cool creatures mm -hmm. um it's a really cool mount but i would never personally want to kill one you know my uh grandpa used to he was an avid hunter all his life and when he got to kind of his elderly er mm -hmm. age he would come home and they were like hey did you get anything and they were like you know he's like no nah, i didn't get anything he was he was watching the animals and he stopped killing the animals and he started watching them yeah, yeah. see it's gotta be like for me it's i i like to watch them um like when we were in africa i preferred to watch them and i prefer to watch colby mm -hmm. colby had it colby shot everything with a cro uh not a crossbow a compound bow mm -hmm. so he had to be within you know 60 yards to kill yeah, that's everything close. and yeah. It was just very amusing to me to watch that. Um, right. He that was very patient. I am very impatient, and for me, I don't want to kill anything unless it's going to look like super sweet on my barbershop wall. Right, right. You know, and that costs 
enough to open up yeah. another barber shop. So. Does, does he use uh, precision archery? Yes, he does. Yeah, he yeah. does. He goes to Precision Archery, which mm-hmm. is in Bridge City. It's an right. awesome place. Those guys are cool. Yeah. Um, Donnie Pickard. Yeah, I, yeah. I met him one time. Uh, I went in there one time. That's when I found out about the new the new Raven yeah. Cross. So his daughter used to be a gymnast. Oh, nice. And, and I was one of her coaches. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. Small so, world. Right, right. Yeah. Everything in be. Southeast Texas is. Is there a bathroom? Yeah. So you want to take a break? Yeah. I'm let's let's, break. let's take a break. Yeah. Whiskey's whiskey's awesome, and it's an awesome beverage. I'll tell you that. I'm glad that I finally started drinking whiskey, like, straight. Yeah. So, you know, I used to, um, you know, I was like a Malibu girl, like, back in the day. Malibu and diet is pretty good, though, when, uh, you're, on the, when you're on the beach. When you're on the but beach. But I'm glad that I don't have to w- mix whiskey with Coke anymore. So, yeah. Because, you know, before Longhorn, which got into the high-end bourbons and the whiskeys, and, and that started trending. Yes. I was, I was like the Jack and Coke, you yeah. know. And now it's more like all these high-end bourbons so that blows my mind okay you know longhorn liquor we we just uh started partnering up with longhorn liquor right yeah. and, they're, and they're phenomenal they have a- everything that you can think of i mean they carry uh blanton's mm-hmm. pappy you know they'll they'll have some crazy stuff and i'll put that on the shelf you know i've we've got anything from johnny walker black label to this that and we'll have guys come in and be like, you don't have Crown? You don't have Jack? And yeah, which like, is so funny because it's like, bro, yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't know. And they'll, they'll, get, they'll get this really nice whiskey and they'll put Coke with it. And I'm just oh, like, oh yeah. Because I remember you were talking about when you first opened, you didn't have like Coke. No, I didn't like, have any mixers. And, and you're I was like, like, why do you want to mix this? Why like, would you want to do that? Yeah. I was a big scotch drinker for a while. Oh, yeah. Which is um, always straight. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of reverts back to Austin when I was dealing blackjack and stuff. You know, I was hanging out with all these big owners or playing poker, this, that. And, and uh, you know. You can't play poker in oh, Austin. It, well, you know, <laughs> these were just cash games. They were, you know, in house, just right. not, no, no taking any rakes or anything. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and it, they would all be drinking these high end scotches and this and that. And I'm like, oh, I gotta fit in with these guys. You know, this is, these are, this is my market, you know. Yeah. And I remember the first time I drank McAllen. And I was McAllen. like, this is disgusting. Yeah. And then it's kind of like, drinking wine like mm-hmm. you know or a craft beer you you kind of get an acquired taste for it yeah i mean it's all nasty at first yeah right? but like you could put a blindfold on me mm-hmm. and put crown jameson um glenn levitt you can put johnny walker this that and i can tell you the difference between them yeah i mean you almost have to mix uh jack and crown because it's so nasty after yeah, you start drinking yeah. blantons I mean, and yeah. eagle, eagle you know, rare yeah. and stuff like that yeah. so yeah we have we have a client his name's jason <laughs> he always comes in with a bottle of eagle rare and oh, okay. he is like i'm not drinking that stuff over there and i'm like jason we've got gr- that's just some great stuff and he's like nope this 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 is it that's it that's eagle, it eagle rare is really good yeah he yeah. he loves that stuff e- eagle rare is buffalo trace aged like a couple more years yeah, yeah. see and i actually think it's a buffalo trace company but if buffalo trace yeah. actually has a lot of really right. fine whiskeys yeah so buffalo trace they make blends yes and they, they have buffalo trace which is aged i think 10 years maybe yeah and then eagle rare is the same buffalo trace that's aged another two years buffalo trace and gives me a hardcore headache so really? yeah i try yeah. to kind of stay away from that one i always hear that wine's more like the headache yes one. wine is and i i i mean i went from you know drinking gallo or setter homes you know yeah. whatever you know <laughs> back in college to right. um you know hanging out with my aunt she is huge wino loves mm-hmm. wine and so i started you know getting into cabs and merlots and this and that and you know it was funny because you were talking about the twist offs there yeah. are actually some really good wines oh, sure. that are twist offs yeah. and reverting back to south africa mm-hmm. S- south africa has a great wine what are the locals drink in south africa the, it's called castle castle some castle ca, castle rock ca, is a malt liquor like what, beer what, what type of cell phones do they have in south africa like the locals do, no, okay so they do not have iphones iphones are not like a thing there really no they all have like androids um 
at the ranch we stayed on, they had like uh, like the know, LGs, like, yeah, like probably. Sam, like Samsung yeah. weird things. Um, it was very different, you know. Mm. Uh, but when I was in Africa, you know, Colby Colby would hunt most of the day, and I got really bored with that. Um, so I decided I was going to drink wine <laughs> a lot, and so I got back on my wine kick in Africa. Got my uh, I guess would be a uh, tolerance for it mm-hmm. and um, you know now I've, I've been digging into Pinot Noirs Kent from uh, okay. Longhorn actually showed me this really cool Pinot Noir called Na- Naomi yeah it's actually a really good one have you seen the 19 crimes yes where yes. the person yeah tell- the person like changes and stuff like that um, yeah. I try to like you know <sighs> If it's popular, I'm probably not going to drink it. I don't know why. Oh, okay. I'm just like that weirdo, yeah, it's like I guess. Mu- it's or like, like a rebel, you know, like, or like, something. It's like music. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just like, no, I, but, I don't uh, like that anymore because everyone else likes it. In a couple of weeks, I've got Salvador coming on. Oh, I'm excited about that. Yeah. He was like hyping me up for the whole show because I was like, Sal, mm. I'm nervous. He's like, man, you're going you're gonna to kill it. Just, just go. You're going to kill it. You know? oh, yeah. And I'm like, all right, man. We're going to spend some time talking about cigars because he's been to a lot of, like... Dude, t- Sal t- knows about some cigars, man. He, he does. He yeah. knows a lot about them. It's mm. pretty wild. I I used to, I, like I said, when, you know, when I was in Austin, you know, they'd be drinking scotch, smoking cigars, and I was like, i got to fit in with these dudes. Like, mm. how am I going to do this? I didn't know anything about sports, you know, anything like that. And so... So in addition to the bartending, were you doing any hair and... Yes. Bar- no. Okay. Yeah. So I've... I've been doing, I've been a barber since I was, I actually, I mean, I did it in high school, um, which mm-hmm. was cosmetology. Right. And, um, you know, I moved to Austin right after high school, 2011, and I was like, I do not like women's hair. I don't know <laughs> how to even talk to these women. Yeah. I don't know anything about this. Like, I, I have nothing in common with these well, you're, girls you're like one of the girls that can hang out with the fellas yeah right? yeah and that's what you're good at yeah so you should rela- like relate relate that yeah. to your business yeah. yeah and and so you know then i started doing men's hair and i was like oh, f- this is way easier i'm mm-hmm. cute you know it's easy just to get a guy in right you know it you know whatever maybe an hour or you know back then it was probably a 20 minute haircut or whatever yeah and uh you know get them in and out and just be done and rather than sitting there talking about their divorce and this and that and that, you know on because and on as and a on. barber you end up being a therapist yeah a, a you really bit. do yeah. and with men it's cool it's cooler like with women because men we bitch men, yeah men all the time so men's problems are different than women's they, problems they are and like you know so what are some of the problems that you hear from yeah, men? <laughs> I, I i hope nobody takes this in like a, a like anti-feminist way or anything like that but as a woman, like we complain, like we, we are just naturally bitchy, you know, we have hormones, this, that, and there's little things, you know, that men don't even notice or acknowledge. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of men, you know, they complain about like work or like, you know, their taxes, like real shit. And us women are like, oh, she didn't do my nails right and didn't hit my cuticles or, you know, right. whatever it may be. Um, and it's really interesting. You know, I, I hear a lot about like divorces, um, mm-hmm. child custody, yeah. child custody in the state of Texas is a really odd thing to me. Well, for sure. It's a bunch of bullshit because yeah, I was going to say that, but like, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I, I don't want to cross any lines with well, the feminists. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm in that space, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm a, single father yeah. and I deal with that as father's rights in, in Texas. You don't really get them in Texas. Um, yeah. It's very odd. I, I I can tell you, I mean, at least hands, toes and teeth of clients who have gone through divorces and there, there are women that really don't deserve custody of their children that right. get it. it and it's they amazing don't, that some of them have any at all. Yeah, exactly. Know? And, and they don't, they, I mean, you know, they get, they get to get like, you know, child support, alimony, this, that, the other, you've got, you know, 80% of this town works in the oil and gas industry, which is yeah. an average of like 71,000 a year. Right. Um, 
So, you know, your taxes, typically, it's 15 to $1,800 a month. Yeah. I could live, I mean, I could personally and, pretty much live off 2000 a yeah, month. And, I don't have a kid, right. but. And if you're shift working, yeah, I get that. Like, you probably can't pick up your kids from school. Yeah. You probably can't take over, you know. But that yeah. doesn't. But that's not everybody. No. You know, for someone like me that's working, you know, 8 to 5 or has a flexible schedule because of uh, sales. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, a, mean, I'm available. I've, I've yeah. heard uh, and to be honest with you, I don't give a shit if you can pick your kid up from school. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you're going to make it work or not. Or you're going to find someone who can, mm-hmm. like a reliable babysitter, daycare, whatever it is. If you have a mother or some kind of figure in your life who is on drugs or, you know, who is going out drinking at the bars every night, having a new guy come home all the mm-hmm. time, this and that. It's like not an environment you want to raise a kid in. Yeah, the state of Texas very is... Odd. The- yeah, for sure, the state of Texas is very far behind it's, when it's it comes to... It's very mother on the mom side. Right. And, you know, and I understand, like, you know, every kid needs their mom. And they also need their dad, too, mm-hmm. you know. Um, right, right. When my parents divorced, they they had... My, my mom was cool with it. She was just like, you know, whatever. Yeah, I've often thought that it should be a default of 50-50. It should. And then 100%. If, if you can't... Um, if you can't contribute to 50-50, then we'll explore other options. Yeah, and then also... But, you unfortunately, know, the default is not 50-50. No, it's, and yeah. it, you, you, depending on the child's age and whatnot, mm-hmm. I think it should kind of lie in the hands of the child, too. But, but that's interesting to, to uh, hear that out of all your, you know, male clients, which, which that's are... That's one of the biggest topics, yeah, and I, yeah. you know... Uh, and since you're in Mid County, you probably have an overabundance of refinery workers, yes. and they're shift workers. And you know, they're we, working seven twelves. Ex- they're working exactly. nights. You know, you know, and these guys are working all the time this night. But I also have people who, lately, I have had clients all over the world mm-hmm. who have moved here to work in the oil and gas industry, who right. may be engineers, who get to have a more flexible schedule, this and that, and um, you know, a. I, I, I've had several who come and they have to move into this area during a custody battle and oh. be in like the right school district or the right this or right that to make it be on the father's side, whether the situation is whatever it is with the mother, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's very odd. Yeah, as a barber, you end up being the therapist. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I hear, I hear a lot of stuff. I am very, very um, abdomen on what happens in the barbershop stays in the barbershop. Yeah, and I try not to be, I, I don't vent that much, so yeah. I, I try to be your therapist. Yeah, I it's let, actually I, really awesome when you come in, I get to vent a lot. I, I let you vent to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as a business, as a young business owner, as a new business owner, I, I don't know what I'm doing half right. the time. And, you know, most of my clients are business owners, or mm-hmm. they're in sales, or right. like I said, you know, they're in the oil and gas industry. And, you know, a lot, a lot of them, I, I almost we we vent to each other but i i respect everyone's advice and opinions because it, ultimately whatever you say matters more than what i think in my head you yeah. know because you're the one paying me right um and you know with men it, it's just a lot easier to talk to you guys and it's a lot easier to uh, hear you mm-hmm. i guess is a better word i, I have a client who you know i was i was um taking appointments and he had been with me from this from the salon where I was at previously where I had no other prior engagements and stuff and you know he's like look you know I used to sink into this chair and then it got so busy and it's so crazy in here you've always got to stop and do this and do this yeah you really need to just take a step back and like be in the present and just not stress out so much you know and and when he told me that, I was like, you know what? Yeah, he's right. You know, I need to make make it more, you know, bring back to where I was about the clients and whatnot. And it, it really changed my perspective. And ever since I've been doing, you know, doing that, uh, hearing and talking to the clients and hearing their story and where they're from, it's, it's actually really amazing how many people are not from here who live here. Yeah. And you've done uh, pretty much everything that you have a mass so far without like a biz- a formal business degree you know you've read yeah, a lot of no. read a lot of books yeah i've read a lot so of books what are some of the things you've done to mitigate that social space you know to promote your business okay so i mean 
what what do you mean by social space so you've you've been killing it on social media yeah for sure yeah uh almost like the fitness industry with before and after pictures i think it's really important to to show that with my clients you know most of them know that they're gonna they're it has a time span when Mm -hmm. you book an appointment and tells you you know spruce haircuts an hour okay Mm -hmm. so you know i've got an hour with you um so I'm able to take a before and after, stuff like that. If I get a break, I bust out my camera and I'm taking pictures of the shop. I immediately upload it to my phone, boom, boom, boom. Just try to keep track of it all the time. Yeah, and you've got like the light ring, the LEDs. Yes, we've yeah. got every tool that you can imagine yeah, to do You've got an ant- antique barber chair. Sure, yeah, uh-huh. that one's from the 1800s. Yeah. It's almost all original except the footrest. And um, you've even taken it to locations yes, for photo shoots. Yes, I have. Yeah. And, you know, so promoting stuff on social media is not easy. So, you know, when you get into social media, you're thinking of, okay, if I have a whiskey drink in there, Longhorn Liquor has to be in there. There, Mm -hmm. That's a partner. If you're sitting in my chair, Tyler Know Everything podcast, that's going to be on there. Um, You've got branded content. You've got, you know, you have to do your hashtags. You've want to come up with a funny caption or some kind of caption um you've got to tag the tools that you're using this that the other every single time you do a branded content or you do a hashtag or anything like that that's going to reach a bigger audience yeah for sure and then you think like austin or san francisco like where twitter is everything yeah and then down here where twitter is nothing yeah twitter is like zero down here so basically here the way that i have thought up the demographic here is the more they see it the more they know Mm -hmm. so like if you're when i get real busy and the barbershop's just crazy and i don't post our insights aren't shit Mm -hmm. and when i am constantly posting to the story so i try to get content the day before so then i can just post throughout the day yeah the frequency yeah as much as I can. And I encourage all of our, my team to take pictures as much as possible. Mm-hmm. I am also very, very particular on yeah. the content that is yeah. being put out. So do you manage all the content? Yes. And, and you don't um, let anybody else post? So I have two of my managers that are on our um, Instagram and Facebook. They're okay. editors on there. And then the other girls are advertisers. So That's they're good. able to like go and tag stuff and whatnot. That's good. But... Um, I just have a certain standard for the brand, um, Mm -hmm. which was a very weird thing coming into Southeast Texas. So when I worked in Austin, we signed social media etiquette contracts. Yeah. And around here, no one knows what that is. No. So, so, you know, you could be a contractor somewhere. And if you're taking pictures in their shop and promoting it when you leave or Mm -hmm. if you get terminated, you have to take it down or they will sue you, right. you know? And so, and I get it now yeah. back then I was like, this is stupid. Like I yeah. did that haircut, you know, mm-hmm. but now as much work as I put into teaching everyone, hashtags, this, the angle, the lighting, every, everything that goes into it, the way my shop is the back, you know, everything. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want another barbershop promoting stuff that was in my barbershop. One, sure. it gets clients confused. First off, mm-hmm. they'll be like, well, no, she just posted a picture here. And I'm like, well, that was not from, it was an old picture. You know, she's not here anymore. Right. Or, you know, it, they get a different idea of what it is. Um, and, I, you know, it, it, for anybody who works really hard to build something, you don't want someone else who's doing the exact same thing to go and promote it as their own you know um and with that you know when i came here it there was no social media as far as barber shops or anything like that goes yeah not that i've seen um i took that to a whole nother level um because most of the time when you share a before and after usually that person shares it on their story yes so all of my girls you know anybody that works at our place they when they come there they are a contractor they, but they have to sign a contract that basically they make a business account their business barber yeah. um and they they need to post before and afters and whatnot they don't i don't require i just encourage them to do that mm-hmm. um but you know there are different action buttons on there which is like the email the booking button call directions yeah. whatnot you have to put, you know, Spruce Barbershop, 
you have to put Spruce Barbershop in your location and your hashtag, this, that, the other, because that goes into a feed. If someone clicks on Spruce Barbershop hashtag, mm-hmm. they'll see all the pictures that are taken in Spruce Barbershop. Yeah, because a lot of people nowadays, because I'm a nurse, they don't use hashtags correctly. Yeah. They try to come up with this unique... Never, their own hashtag yeah. or something and, like, that's, and it's that's not the complete, how it works yeah that's the complete opposite of what a hashtag is intended for a hashtag is meant to be common yeah so that you click on it I and, mean, and you see all the I posts i follow hashtags all the time like yeah. I, I, one of my big ones is emeralds <laughs> um yeah. and you know anytime someone hashtags emeralds it pops up on my feed you mm-hmm. know and so that's what, the same what is thing. Emeralds? It, emerald. Yeah. It's like a like a gem, like a dot. You oh, know, like okay. An emerald stone. Like the emerald. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm obsessed with them. I have a problem. <laughs> okay. um, I don't have any yet, but I'm mm. waiting on it. Anyway, uh, so you know, w- every time you know, I I'll tag like spruce haircut or like yeah. spruce shave, spruce right. special, um, that kind of stuff because I want that to start going into the feed. And yeah. every time you tag the location, that's going to pop up on there. Right. So the more generic the hashtag, the better the yes. hashtag. And so it, if you make it unique, there's Google only be... makes it super easy for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you can literally type in men's haircut hashtags, and it'll pop up to a hashtag generator. Oh, and then you cool. can go to that and view insights off of these hashtags. And when you type it in, so if you type in a hashtag, it'll tell you, okay, there's 100K plus posts on this. Yeah. If there's only, like Spruce Barbershop only has like 100 plus posts. Mm-hmm. So if you've got something over 300K, that means there's a lot of people following it. Yeah. So that's the one you're going you're gonna to want to use. Um, so a lot of ours are repetitive, but they, mm-hmm. they do get a large following, and it's, really, it's actually really cool. I have linked up with so many female barbershop owners around yeah. the country because of it. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, we're always messaging each other and, like, you know, talking about these different new things and whatnot, and it's actually really cool. Um, but you know, it's just kind of one of those things. It's, it's a constant. Mm-hmm. I mean, I typically get to work about nine, eight, eight thirty, nine AM. Yeah. I leave there probably nine 30. Mm-hmm. And when I get home, I set up automatic so you can schedule posts Yeah. and I'll set up five or six of those to go out for the next day. Sure. And you know, one, one post could take me an hour to oh, articulate just by does. making the dots align in yeah. the post or you know the spacing correctly or whatever it may be i'm just i i want everything to be suiting for the eye mm-hmm. is the best way to put it yeah um and you know it it it, ta- it takes a lot to want to do that mm-hmm. um so you know our my team has been very very adamant about learning about it we've done I've done two social media classes so far Mm -hmm. with them. And I've had people who come from other places and come and sit in and listen, you know. Um, And this is just all stuff that I've read, you know. I just read on it. And I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. Yeah, it's a very interesting time. Yeah, that's the way the world is right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, like, so you came in Thursday Mm -hmm. and we were talking about um, face-to-face marketing. Right. That is not a thing anymore. No. People do not do that anymore. Um, I don't see a lot of people going out and, you know, like we've we've got some koozies up here and whatnot. I have personally probably handed out 5,000 of these koozies <laughs> <laughs> around this area. And to each person, I will literally say, hey, I'm Brooke Bellinger. I own Spruce Barbershop. We do straight razor shaves, haircuts, anything from men's grooming. We have beer on top. We've got a full bar. You know, and it's a mouthful, but every time people are like, man, I just really respect the fact that you came up to me, you know, mm-hmm. and are actually, in, as the owner, interacting and coming out and doing that. And I think that that has been a very successful strategy of marketing, um, along with the social media and word of mouth. Word of mouth around here is everything. Yeah, it's almost like a handwritten mailed card. Yeah. Because nowadays we get so much email and social media, yeah. we don't don't really get anything in the mail unless it's like a bill or yeah. junk mail yeah. so when you get a handwritten thank you card it's it, like super special yeah. like you're like man they, mm-hmm. who takes the time to do this right yeah for sure <laughs> um so yeah it's, yeah it's definitely that's a great way to compare it mm-hmm. um yeah well tell everybody where they can find you 
So, um, you know, we're on 11th Street in Port Natchez, um, which if you are coming from Beaumont, you'll go down 366, mm -hmm. and you'll go down, take the Port Natchez exit, um, it's across the street from, like, Sea Ranch Cafe, and then if you're coming from Mid-County, um, off Knoll, to the left, yeah. on 11th Street. It's in a residential neighborhood. I think everybody in Mid County knows where you are. I, <laughs> I, that's the surprising thing. They don't. Oh, really? So yeah. we have Mid been County's, having Mid County supports so businesses. Yeah. many people who are like, I've never been here before. Oh, okay. I'm, I know, just heard about it. Yeah. And that was, this has been over the past week or so that, I mean, our, in, our insight through Square, which is our point of sale system, you know, we've had over 500 new customers in the past two weeks, and I'm like, "Wow, where are you guys coming from?" Yeah, you know, and I always ask them where they've heard about it, and Facebook has been pretty much number one. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook or Google, you know, if they yeah. look up on Google. Yeah. So tell everybody where they can find you on social media. So on social media, we've got Spruce Barbershop on Facebook, and then at Spruce Barbershop on Instagram. Um, those are the only two platforms we use right now. Um, I don't really see any point in using any other. <laughs> yeah, There's Southeast not, Texas yeah. is just not into Twitter. No. You know? there, and there's 18 God, to... God, I would really yeah. hate to have to go and use another platform, yeah. to be honest with I'm, you. I'm sure Austin was into Twitter, but I think everybody in Southeast Texas from 18 to 85 is on Facebook. Yes, Facebook, much. our demographic on Facebook is 18 to 65. There you go. And... Um, so you know we and we get a lot of wives a lot of wives notice you know the 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 man wax that we oh, do yeah, yeah and that's a huge thing you know you guys nose hairs and ear hair and stuff yeah. like that they, so they're they suggesting really to their husband appreciate like hey you need oh, to go yeah. there they'll book an appointment with me and leave notes on it yeah. and be like make sure you get his ear hair make sure you get his nose hairs and i'm like yeah. oh, I'm, I'm gonna get them because as men that's something that we don't really notice, no you, you know? don't yeah. notice and like when we wake up in the morning and look at you we're like yeah, Dude, you got do something two about that. inch long hair coming out of your nose. What's up? Right, you know, right. yeah. Um, but so you know, we're we're very very. Um, we want to promote that. We want to promote that. You're getting the best service in the area. You're not being rushed through. You're you're being taken care of. And when you get home, your wife is like, "Holy shit, you look good!" Like, what yeah. what did they do? You right. know, um, you can get a facial. And come in after, you know, I, I've got a few clients who are professional poker players. They go and, uh -huh. you know, play poker for 48 hours or whatever. Right. And, you know, we do a caffeine facial on them and boom, they're back to life. Oh, wow. It's like a whole different person. Yeah. Um, so h how many notifications are you going to have when you uh, <laughs> silence your phone for an hour? Probably, I probably. have 72 right now. 72. Yes. That's insane. Um, so let, let's wrap this up. Um, yeah, you can you can find Spruce in Mid County, Facebook, Instagram. Um, you know, def here I'll I'll show show off the hard part real quick for the camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brooke. Well, you're welcome back anytime. Uh, super interesting, highly intelligent, and always great stories. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And thank you for having me. I'll see you in two weeks. All right. Right on. All right. See you later. Bye. It is amazing how happy a boy can look after a haircut, especially as soon as he steps down from the barber chair. To most of us, when we are young, haircuts seem pretty useless, since the hair will always just grow back again, for some of us anyway. But when you're on your way to meet your best girl, it's worth all the trouble.